Welcome back. Today we're going to be crocheting a super cozy, chunky sweater. So let's get started. Let's talk about what you're going to need. Now the yarn needs to be a bulky yarn. So it can be whatever yarn you prefer made out of any fiber you want, so long as it is a bulky yarn. You're going to need a 15 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook and a regular 10 millimeter hook. You're also gonna need your yarn or tapestry needle and some scissors. Something that's helpful but not necessary are stitch markers. I'm gonna be using them a lot in this tutorial, but if you don't have any, you can also use safety pins or just little pieces of yarn. Let's talk about how we're gonna build this sweater. So we're gonna begin with your initial chain, which is going to be the width of your garment. We're gonna start at the front panel, and then you're just gonna add the length of the fabric by adding rows. Once you get to about three quarters of the garment length, which we'll talk about the measurements here in just a moment, you're gonna start. Uh, you're gonna begin with the neckline. So you're gonna do the V neck. So you're gonna start with one panel and then you'll do the other panel and then you'll work on the back panel and complete the full length of your garment. The sleeves are going to be added onto the sweater itself. So instead of making them separate and sewing them on, we're just gonna crochet them directly onto the vest of the sweater and then you can go ahead and adjust the length as needed. So the measurements you're going to need to take are the length, which you're going to measure from your shoulder down towards your hip or however long it is that you want your sweater to fit. Uh, take the measurement of both the front part of your body and the back part of your body and use whichever one of those measurements is the longest. Next, you're going to take the shoulder, bust, waist, and hip measurement. You're going to take this around your body, so completely around the widest part of your shoulders, your bust, your waist, and your hip. Use whichever one of those four measurements is the widest. You're going to divide that number in half, and that is going to be your garment width. Now, the sleeve measurements are more for if you're going to be making this for someone else and you can't try it on, because the sleeves are going to build them as we go, so you'll be able to adjust them as you're crocheting them. But if you're going to take the sleeve measurements, make sure that you bend your elbow and measure from your shoulder all the way down to your wrist. That's going to give you the length of your sleeve. Measure around the widest part of your arm so you can get the um, sleeve circumference and then you're going to do the same for your cuff. Um, we will go through and adjust these later as we crochet and you'll be able to measure these out and make sure that the sleeve is actually going to fit you know whoever it is that you are crocheting the sweater for. All right, so now that we've covered all of the pattern notes, let's actually begin making this thing. So you're gonna begin with an initial chain, and for this, you need to make a slip knot. So wrap the yarn around two fingers, and then you're gonna insert your hook in front of, or through, I guess, the first loop. Grab the second one and pull it through. To tighten the knot, you just pull on the threads individually. Now, as this is a beginner-friendly pattern, we're gonna just talk about how to make the chain and everything else. So to make a chain, you're gonna wrap the yarn around your hook and pull the top loop through the bottom one. And then you just repeat. So yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through, and repeat this until you have a chain that measures your garment width. Because the stitch tends to shrink just a little bit, I would add an additional inch or three centimeters uh, just to make sure that this is going to fit. Make sure that when you measure your chain, you are not pulling on it. Just lay it flat, because if you pull on it, it's not going to give you an accurate measurement. So. Once you've completed your chain, we're going to begin with a foundation row. So go into the second stitch from your hook, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. You're going to leave this loop on your hook and move on to the next stitch. Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. You're going to repeat this in all of the loops of the chain. Now, I just made a really small sample, but remember this chain should measure your garment width plus about an inch or three centimeters extra. Next, you're gonna work on your return pass, and so you're gonna yarn over and pull through one loop. Now for the remaining loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. So there's one, and then two, and then you repeat. Yarn over, pull through two. And you're gonna repeat the yarn over, pull through two pattern until you are left with just one loop on your hook. Now for row number one, we're gonna be working into the vertical stitch. The vertical stitch is made up of two legs, so it has the front leg and the back leg, and it's going to look like an inverted V, kind of like this. To crochet a knit stitch, you're going to insert your hook between the two legs of the stitch and move the hook all the way to the back of the fabric. You skip the first stitch because you already have it on your hook, so you always begin on your second vertical stitch. Once you insert your hook into the stitch, you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And then you repeat with all of the vertical stitches of the row. So. Insert your hook between the front and back leg of the stitch all the way through to the back of the fabric, yarn over, and pull up a loop. 
When you reach the final stitch of the row, it's going to look a little like this. So this one is made up of three legs. It has the two on the side and then one towards the inside of the fabric. You're going to insert your hook into the stitches, just like you see here, yarn over and cast on a stitch. So once all your stitches are cast on, you're just going to complete a regular return pass and that's yarn over, pull through one. And then for the rest of the stitches, you're going to yarn over and pull through two until you are left with just the one uh, loop on your hook. From there, you're going to repeat this same row. So beginning on the second vertical stitch, you are going to knit stitch into every vertical stitch and then cast on into the final stitch of the row. Repeat the knit stitch row until your fabric measures approximately three quarters of your garment length. So this is going to be how low you want the v-neck to go. Once you've determined that measurement, you're going to place a stitch marker in the center of the fabric. And I'm talking about the width of the fabric. Count your stitches on both sides and make sure that you have the same number of vertical stitches on the left as you do on the right in order to have two even side panels. So to complete the first panel, you're just going to knit stitch until you reach your stitch marker. So I left three stitches right before reaching the stitch marker because we are going to begin the decreases. So you're going to use these first two vertical stitches and you're going to insert your hook behind the front leg of the first stitch and then knit stitch into the second stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. That is a knit stitch two together. Then you're just going to cast on into that final stitch of the row and you've completed your first row of decreases. Next, you're just gonna yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two to complete your return pass until you are left with just the one loop on your hook. When you complete your second row, again, you're gonna knit stitch until you get to the last three stitches. You're gonna knit stitch two together using the first two vertical stitches and then cast on into the final stitch. So just to go into that uh, knit stitch two together, you're gonna insert your hook behind the top leg of the first vertical stitch and knit stitch into the second one. Yarn over and pull through both of those stitches and then just cast on into the final stitch of the row and that's going to be the bottom chain and then just work a return pass. Repeat your decrease rows until your, gar uh, your fabric length measures your garment length and then we're gonna work on the second panel. So you're gonna decrease in every single row to create the V-neck. Try to keep count of all of the rows that you've crocheted. If you haven't been counting them, that's okay. You can count them on the inside. You can also count the top loops and jot that down somewhere. You're gonna to have to create the second panel, so you'll need to have the same number of loops. Now, you're going to leave a long tail of yarn. Cast on that final row and leave the loops on your hook. You're just going to push them back towards the back of the hook this is gonna make it a lot easier to crochet them together once you create your second loop and to create the back panel. Now, we're gonna work on the second panel, and now, just like we did the first panel, we're gonna to have to decrease, but the decreases are gonna be at the beginning of the row. We're gonna still work on the knit stitch two together using the second and third vertical stitches. So, once you find here your stitch marker, you're gonna go into the stitch right next to it, and you're gonna cast on one knit stitch. So leave a long tail of yarn. You can weave this in later. So yarn over and pull up a loop and then knit stitch two together. So using that second and third vertical stitch, you're going to do the same thing that we did in the uh, previous panel. So you're going to insert your hook behind the front leg of the first stitch and then knit stitch into the second vertical stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now go into the stitch that follows that one and continue to knit stitch and then just knit stitch through the end of the row and cast on into the final stitch of the row. This is going to be the decrease for this panel and you're gonna repeat this again until you complete a length that is the same as uh, the other panel. So whether you counted your rows or you counted the top loops uh, at the top of the sweater, it doesn't matter, just make sure that they match. All right, once you've got your two panels and they look like this and that you've you know made sure that you have the same number of rows or loops off the top of the hook, whichever one you went with, we're gonna connect these two panels together to create the back panel. So now you're going to pull all of the stitches from the first panel onto the front part of the hook so that you have just one continuous row of loops like this. So as we join them together with the return pass, we are gonna to have to crochet a chain between the two panels. Now the number of stitches you're gonna crochet into that chain is going to be the difference between your two panels and the total number of stitches you crocheted 
for your initial chain. So say you crocheted 30 stitches for your initial chain, you're left with, you know, 10 stitches on either side of the side panels. That means you have to make a chain of 20 stitches in between. That way you have the same garment width throughout your entire sweater. For the chain, you're going to use the exact same process that you did for your initial chain. So just yarn over and pull through. So do this until you have completed the number of chains that you need. And then we're going to complete the return pass for the second panel. If the first few stitches are really loose, like you see here, just pull on the tail end that you left uh, for, for this panel before completing your return pass. You are going to weave this in later, so it's not going to continue to pull out like this. Just work your return pass, and then after you work about a row or two, it'll stop pulling through. And then once you go through and weave in all your tail ends, that problem will, you know, solve itself. Once you have completed all of this, see, I, I go through and I pull it a bit more. Um, this is what your project should look like. So you're going to have your two side panels, and then you're going to have the chain that connects the two of them. From here, you're going to knit stitch into the vertical stitches of the panel, and then just create a foundation row into the chain stitches. So for that, remember, you just insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop, just like you did for the foundation row. So I'll work through this a little bit quickly and just show you how to cast on those first few stitches for those of you that need to see it. Once you've completed that foundation row, uh, you're just going to continue working a repeat of your knit stitch until the back panel measures your desired garment length. So for this foundation row, you're going to find the first chain. So this this one right here is part of that first vertical stitch. So go into the first full chain. So the one that has no other yarn going into it, you're going to insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over and cast on a loop. And then you repeat this with all of the stitches of the chain until you reach the other side. Once you get to the other panel, you're just going to knit stitch all the way across. After completing the back panel of your sweater, the vest should look like this. You're going to have to complete a bind off before we can start sewing the sides of the vest together and then adding the sleeves. So to work on the bind off, we're going to combine a knit stitch and a single crochet. So beginning on the second vertical stitch of the row, you're going to insert your hook into the stitch, oh, but I had already crocheted my first knit stitch. <laughs> so we're going to go back. Okay. So here's the second vertical stitch of the row. We're going to cast on a knit stitch and then we're going to close that stitch as a single crochet. So once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops so that you are left with just one loop on your hook. And you're going to repeat this in every stitch of the row. This is going to create a nice neat edge and it's going to close off the spacing between our vertical stitches. So, you know, our fabric will look nice. When you reach the final stitch of the row, you are just going to single crochet. So here's that final stitch. So just single crochet one, and then you're going to finish this off with a chain. This is going to make a small knot at the bottom and then cut a long tail end of yarn. You're going to pull that through along with your hook and tighten the little knot at the end. So here's what our fabric looks like now that it's all finished. You're going to have to go through and weave in all of your ends. This is going to make the stitching and the rest of the sweater a lot easier. So you're going to need a yarn or a tapestry needle. Now you can use any tail end you want. It's the same process for all of them. But once you thread this through, you're going to look at the inside of the uh, of the sweater or the back part of your stitching. And we're only going to work on the return pass. So this is the back side, and here's the front part of the stitching. If you keep all of your stitching on that return pass, you won't see it through the far front part of the sweater. So you're just going to stitch in a bit of a square shape. So you can use one or two return passes for this. Um, but you're going to stitch going in one direction and then you're going to switch directions. And then if you're having difficulty pulling your needle through because it's the yarn is too thick or whatever the reason is, you can just twist the needle the way you see me doing it in the video. It makes it a lot easier to pull the needle all the way through. Once you stitch in a square shape, you can go around two or three times and then you just cut your yarn as close to the edge, um, closest to the fabric as possible. And that is how you weave an end. Do this for all of the tail ends of your sweater before moving on to the stitching. Before we work on the stitching to uh, sew the sweater, or I guess th right now it's a vest. So before we close the vest, try the vest on. So stand in front of the mirror, place a stitch marker where you want the armhole to go. Um, and then we're going to start stitching from the bottom side. Make sure that you count the stitches and then you Count the same number of stitches on the other side so you have two even sleeves. If you are using measurements, you can also do this using the measurement. So take the circumference of the arm 
and then you're going to fold your measuring tape in half, place it along the shoulder, and then down towards the armpit, and that's where you're going to place your stitch marker. Count the number of stitches, just like you did if you were to try it on, and then repeat that on the other side. Make sure that you have the same number of stitches from the armpit of, I guess, the sweater all the way down to the hip. That way you make sure that your sleeves match. Now to sew, you're just going to use a long piece of the same yarn that you were using to, to crochet your sweater. Make a knot on one end, and then we're going to begin here at the bottom part of the sweater. So just hide that little knot at somewhere in the first return pass. Now you're going to go into the second side, so to the front panel. You're going to find that first stitch, and you're just going to sew through or I guess under the post of the stitch just like you see here. So come in through the bottom part and then come out through the top part of the stitch and pull through. And then you're going to go into the back panel and you're going to do the same. So where your yarn came out from the first stitch that is where you're going to insert your needle. So right in here you're going to go under the post of the stitch and through the top side like this. It's kind of difficult to explain it with words actually. Um, so just watch the video. <laughs> you're you're going to repeat this same stitch over and over. So always insert your needle into the stitch where your yarn came out in the previous stitch and then go into the stitch right above it like this. So you do this on one side and then you stitch on the other side and then just complete uh, the side panel like this until you reach your stitch marker. So sew a few stitches using a kind of a loose tension and then just pull the yarn every few stitches to tighten it up. This is a lot easier to do every few stitches instead of doing it every single stitch. Just makes it very easy to miss a stitch if you're tightening it after every single time you stitch it. So give it a few stitches before pulling on the yarn and tightening the sides. So just kind of like this. So see I left a space here at the top and then I've already reached my stitch marker. So I go through and I pull on the yarn and make sure that the tension between this, uh, the panels isn't too tight. So if you pull on your yarn too tight, you're going to shrink the length of your fabric and it's just going to scrunch up the fabric right under your arm. So anyway, go through, pull your yarn, and then you're going to start working on the inside of the sweater. So we're going to make a double knot and then you're just going to weave in your ends. Some people prefer to just weave in ends and not make a knot. I leave that up to you. I like to make a double knot whenever I'm done stitching and then weave in my ends. But this same process, you're going to repeat it on the other side of the sweater so that you end up with a vest. So once you've got your vest all ready to go, let's work on the sleeve. So beginning on either sleeve, it doesn't matter, we're going to begin with a row of single crochet. Now we're going to use the post of the stitch as opposed to using the actual stitch itself like you normally do when you crochet. So by that, I mean you're going to insert your hook through the first stitch and then out through the other end, just like you see here. Kind of like how when we were sewing. That, yeah, it's similar, only you're doing this with a hook now. You're going to pull up a loop and then you're going to chain one. So yarn over, pull through one, like this. Now for the rest of the round, we're going to single crochet. So beginning on the next stitch, and I'll get it just a little bit closer here so you can see. You're going to insert your hook in through the same stitch that you had crocheted before, go through to the other side, yarn over and pull up a loop. Once you have two loops, you're going to yarn over and pull through two. And then you find the next stitch, which there it is. So insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through. So you are single crocheting all the way around. All right, so once you made it all the way around, here's that last single crochet that I need to finish my row. We're going to get to the front part, and this is what your sleeve is going to look like so far. So if you wanted to leave this as a vest, you can do another row of single crochet, and you're good to go. Uh, for those of us that are making a sweater, though, we need to add our sleeves. So make sure that you t uh, turn your fabric. So this is what it looks like with that row of single crochet. Turn the fabric a little bit so that your stitching looks like this. Now you're going to go into that first full stitch. So not the chain, the first full single crochet and you're going to cast on a foundation row. So this, this is the same foundation row that you used for the initial chain. So insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop until you get to the very first stitch you crocheted. So here is the second to last single crochet and then the last single crochet of the row. So this is what it looks like. If you have a corded hook, this part 
it becomes so much easier. If you have a straight you hook, you may have a difficult time casting on all of these stitches, in which case you're going to have to pull out the stitching on the side of the vest. Or if you haven't stitched it together yet, then don't stitch the vest together. Crochet the sleeve before you stitch all of the sides closed. But because I use a corded crochet hook and this is how I crocheted my sweater, this is how I'm showing you how to do it. So once you complete your return pass, remember you're going to yarn over and pull through two until you are left with just the one loop on your hook. And then we're going to begin our row of knit stitch. Now this is the same knit stitch that you used for the body of the sweater. So beginning on the second vertical stitch, you're just going to insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So knit stitch all the way around again. So your fabric is going to look a little like this. Once you've completed or you've cast on all of your stitching, work your return pass and then you're going to repeat this so that you have three rows of knit stitch. For this case, your foundation row is going to count as a row. So foundation row counts as row one and then you're going to do two additional rows of knit stitch and then we're going to work on our decrease. Now there are two ways that you can do your sleeve and it depends on how you want your sleeve to look. For the green sweater that you see at the beginning of the video, I worked my decreases every sixth row because I wanted big wide sleeves. If you want your sleeves to taper a lot more um, so that it's more fitted, then you're going to do your decreases every four rows. The decrease, as you can see here, is the same decrease that we used for the neckline. So you're just going to knit stitch two together using the second and third vertical stitches of the row. You're going to go all the way around until you reach the last three vertical stitches of the row and you're going to uh, knit stitch two together into the two stitches of the row then cast on into the final stitch so you're going to do a decrease at the beginning of the row and at the end of the row again you're going to do this only for either rows four or row six depending on how wide a sleeve you want keep track of the number of rows the way i do this is by adding a stitch marker to each of my decrease rows so as i decrease i place the stitch marker at the beginning of the row and then i do the row decrease and then you know three rows of knit stitch decrease place a stitch marker and then I, all I have to do is just count the number of stitch markers and make sure I have the same number of rows. The next thing you're going to do is add the cuff. We're going to do this before completing um, the second sleeve so it's going to be the very last part we're going to do and then um, the same process remember you're just going to repeat it on the second sleeve so this is where those stitch markers come in handy you see you can just count the number of stitches or the number of stitch markers and then everything is going to be even all right so for the cuff you're going to need to switch to your 10 millimeter hook up until this point we had been using our 15 millimeter hook but for the cuff and then this is going to be the same for the neckline and the hemline of the sweater you're going to use your 10 millimeter hook it's just going to make a smaller stitch and it's going to create a cleaner look so we're going to do the same bind off that we used for the back panel of our sweater now this was the knit stitch single crochet so just insert your hook into the stitch cast on a knit stitch and then just yarn over and pull through two to single crochet complete this throughout the rest of the row once you reach the end of the row you're just going to single crochet into that final stitch of the row and then you're going to chain one so here's our single crochet chain one we're going to turn our work around and then from here you're just going to complete rows of single crochet so beginning on the first stitch of the row just insert your hook into the stitch yarn over and pull up a loop you can make as many rows of single crochet as you want i used three rows of single crochet um, so it was the bind off and then plus two additional rows to make the three rows of single crochet but you can make this part as thick or as narrow as you want when you are through leave a really really long tail end of yarn you are going to use this to sew the bottom part of the sleeve closed so just like you see here there's a big long tail end that's the same thread we're going to use to uh, stitch using the same stitch that we use for the side of the sweater so once you've completed your sleeves, like I said, it's the same process for both. You may be left with this big gap between the sleeve right here. You're going to just stitch that together once you get to that part of the sweater. So go through, stitch everything tight, uh, weave in your ends, and then repeat with the second sleeve. So moving on to the neckline, we're going to begin uh, just crocheting a single crochet right where our stitch marker is. So this center stitch marker right here, just begin with your chain one, and then just single crochet all the way up to the top part of the shoulder so which 
I'll show you here what the stitching is going to look like in a second. The front part of the stitching is really easy to identify. It's just those transition stitches that are kind of funny looking, especially if you're a beginner. If you are a more experienced crocheter, then, you know, just go around, single crochet a few times around. Now you can either end the row at this stitch marker again, turn your work around and crochet going in the opposite direction. Or again, if you're more experienced, you can always just decrease at the point um, in the center part like right at the cleavage of your sweater and then just continue working in the round. Work as many rounds as you want. Make sure that you try it on after you crochet about two or three rounds to make sure that the sweater is still going to fit over your head because you are going to be decreasing a little bit as you go. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's all you need to do. You're going to repeat the same process for the hemline and that's it. Now for those of you that are still really new to crochet and you're still following along, this is what the back stitching is going to look like. So. You're going to insert your hook into that space right there. So here in the corner, you're going to skip these stitches that I'm holding right under my thumb. Go into the next full stitch, which is this one right here. That is where you're going to insert your hook and pull a single crochet. And now you've transitioned into the back part of the sweater and you're just going to find your stitching. So here's your vertical stitch. Your stitch is typically in between the two vertical stitches. So once you can find the two vertical stitches, just find the stitch that's right above that. So right there, insert your hook and single crochet. When you get to the other end of the row, you're going to do the same thing. So you're just going to skip the corner most stitches and find the first full stitch on the front side of the V-neck and then just crochet all the way down to the stitch marker. Once you reach the stitch marker, you're going to crochet your last single crochet into that same stitch. So right here where that stitch marker was. Now, if you wanted to just add more to the neckline, you can just chain one, turn your work around and go the other way. I'm going to stop right here. So I'm just going to chain one to make a knot at the bottom, pull my yarn through, and then just weave in these tail ends. And that's how I'm going to leave the neckline. For my sweater, I think I went around twice. Uh, but yeah, it's up to you how many times you want to go around to make the top part of your sweater. Now you're going to repeat this process down at the bottom of the hemline. You're going to be working in the round. So just pick one side of the sweater, place a stitch marker there just to know that it is where you are beginning um, your single crochets for the hem. And then just work around as many times as you want. I went around, I think maybe three times for my sweater. Um, or I think, no, I think it was five rounds for my sweater and then three for Dylan's. So this yellow one is for my seven-year-old kid. So I only went around about three times, but that's up to you. Um, other than that, you can use this same pattern with different yarn weights. So I would use twice the hook size recommended by the yarn label. And they're just kind of play around with the fabric and see, you know, if the stitching is too wide, then maybe use a smaller hook size, but you know, play around with it. It's measurement based so you should be able to use any yarn weight or hook combination that you want uh, but that's it thank you so much for watching you can find yarn patterns and all kinds of stuff on my website i'll link it down in the description box below i'll see you all again in the next tutorial